my babies are here and i'm so glad that is over <laughs> and i'm so glad to meet them so i wanted to give you guys an update on how my labor and delivery went towards the end of week 36 going into week 37 i started to really struggle i do have a video on my bell's palsy diagnosis so i'll link that here or in the description box if you guys want to watch that video so we got to the, the day before they came which was my son's birthday and i was feeling a bit down because i wasn't able to do anything with him i was still at home my family and my husband and stuff did treat him of course but i was still feeling a bit like a bit sad a bit down about that and i also really didn't want them to come on his birthday twins they already have to share a birthday i didn't really want him to have to share with one with them too so i was kind of talking to myself like okay don't come just wait until my son's birthday is over and then you can come whenever you want i had a cesarean booked for the end of that week based on my ultrasound results i still had hope that baby a might turn around and or that they would just wait until the c-section date i was so uncomfortable the weather started to get really warm outside so i was even more uncomfortable even more sweaty so my son's birthday came and went i went to bed and as usual woke up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet i think this was maybe the second time in the middle of the night that i woke up to go to the toilet and when I was on the toilet, I did a wee and then I had a pop. So I got up to turn the light on because I have managed to find my way from my bed to the toilet with precision, with, without any lights. So all the lights were off. I kind of stumbled from the bed to the toilet, sat on it, heard a pop, thought to myself, oh, like, I don't know what that is. I thought that it might be blood. I don't know why. I always had this thing where I would just always check for blood i don't know why but that was just something that i kept doing so i got up thinking oh i hope i'm not bleeding and then water started <laughs> water started going everywhere and i was like oh sh like shit like oh my god oh my god oh my god i was i started shaking and i wasn't sure what to do because i was like i don't know if i should sit back down on the toilet because the water's going everywhere but my husband's sleeping and it's in the middle of the night and like can i wait like what's gonna happen are they gonna come like right now or what's gonna happen so i kind of sat back down on the toilet and looked around and thought shit like what do i do so i tried to call my husband from the toilet and he wasn't he wasn't responding and of course my son's in the other room so i don't want to be so loud that i wake him up so i sat on the toilet for a little while and then i got up from the toilet when things seemed to slow down a bit i've never experienced my waters breaking so it was just a, a shock for me i think around that time i was 37 weeks and five days i was pretty confident that i would at least get to 38 weeks now looking back maybe my feelings of just not being able to take any more maybe my my body was feeling that as well i went over to my husband and i said i'd oh, like my waters have broken and he jumped out of the bed and he was like oh my gosh like let's go i did have my bag packed i, I had planned on making a what's in my bag video my delivery bag video but i didn't have chance to make that we just started to put like the additional stuff in the bags and put the additional car seat in the car i called triage and was like oh, my waters have just broke i'm pregnant with twins and they were like is the water was the water clear and it was so i was like yeah the water's clear and she was like okay we'll just make your way in could you just let me know what was the position of the babies the last time you checked and i was like <laughs> baby a was breached and she was like okay fine we'll get ready so we go to the hospital we get there it was a bit hard to find triage but it was through um the delivery ward so we go through there and she puts me on monitors takes my blood and does all of that kind of stuff the testing she puts an iv in my hand and she's like we'll check the positions of the babies but just in case you have to have a cesarean you'll need one of these anyway so let's just do it now i hate needles with a passion so she was like do you mind if i do it now i was like well it's not really what i want <laughs> but i understand if you have to do it and she was like yeah like it would probably just be better to have it there so she put that in and then she was like okay we'll wait until the doctors come around and they'll do a scan and they'll check the position of the babies when my mortals broke it was like 2 a.m 2 30 a.m and by the time we got to the hospital it was about three half past three so the doctor came in and she scanned them and she was like oh yeah like baby a is still breech so we'd recommend a c-section so i was like okay like uh 
like I really did want to try and give birth naturally. I was telling the midwife, I really want to try and give birth naturally if baby A's head down. She was like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll keep happy thoughts for you. I'll try to encourage him to turn. And I was like, yeah, please do. So I had like a couple of midwives <laughs> sending the baby vibes to turn. But by the time the doctor got to me and she scanned, she was like, yeah, he's still breached. So we'd recommend a C-section. So I was like, okay, that's fine. As I said in my last update, I'd kind of already resigned myself to the fact that that was probably going to be the case because the babies were weighing at about six pounds when I had my last ultrasound and I just didn't feel like there was enough space for them to move again. The doctor said, you know, we'd recommend a C-section, but I, I don't know if you used the word safer or, you know, we'd prefer to deliver you during the day it's just generally safer to do c-sections in the day so i was like okay she's like well we'll wait until the morning when the morning shift come in and then they'll put you on the list to deliver you and that will be at around eight o'clock so i was like okay that's fine so they gave me like a robe and some wash to wash myself with so i went in the shower got ready put my my socks on i've never had an operation so i was really really nervous of course it wasn't my first choice i was feeling a bit i don't know a bit sad about that so it got to about five o'clock and i started having contractions when i saw the doctor i wasn't having any i wasn't experiencing any contractions at all the only thing that had happened was that my waters had broke so i started to feel contractions and they were coming like every eight minutes i was trying to get some rest they gave some scrubs to my husband he had put all of that on so we were just pretty much waiting in the room but then they started to pick up and the gaps between them were were shorter so when it got to maybe there was like a three minute gap in between them and they were pretty intense i called the call bell and i was like I'm having contractions and they're pretty close together and they're pretty intense. And she was like, oh yeah, you know, that happens. You will get contractions, but usually like it takes some time for you to deliver. And I was like, with my son, when I was having these type of contractions, I was 10 centimeters dilated in like half an hour. So I was like, that's fine but I just wanna let you know that my first pregnancy moved really, really fast. But she was like, okay, I'll go and speak to somebody. So the midwife's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna like be with you for your contractions and I'm gonna feel the intensity of them. So when I was having my contractions, she was putting her hand on my stomach. After I had a few, she was like, oh, like they're pretty intense, aren't they? I was like, yeah, they're pretty intense. <laughs> and at that point I had already asked for the gas in there. I don't know if it's just me, but I love a bit of gas in it. So I was experiencing my contractions with the gas in it, which I love. She goes, she comes back and behind her are like 10 people. And she's like, I've got the doctors and they start streaming in, in the room. So I'm kind of like looking at all of their faces. And the doctor um, says to me, oh, you know, like I've heard that you're having contractions and it seems like the babies are trying to come. And I was like, yeah, like it feels like they're trying to come. And she was like, so we're, we're just going to push you forward a little bit more, uh, a little bit. And we're just going to go and give you a C-section now. And I was like, okay, you're like, that's fine. And the, the niece for this was like, okay, so I've got to consent you now. This is what I'm going to do to you. Bear in mind, I'm scared of needles. So she's like, I'm going to put a needle in your spine. <laughs> and this is what it's going to do. And this could go wrong. And I was just like, okay, well, you know, I hope that you do a good job. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to do my best. So they will meet into the operating fit. Our operating fit, I wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. It was bright, but I found all the people a bit too much, if I'm honest. I know that they probably all needed to be there for a particular reason, but I gave birth to my son in a birthing center and it was just me and the midwife and a uh, trainee midwife. So it was literally just me and them, me, them, my husband and my parents when they were in and out, get into the operating theatre and um, they're like, okay, well, we just need you to sit on the table and kind of lean forward and we're gonna put the injection in your spine. So I'm already freaking out about that. And then I've got a midwife in front of me and she's monitoring the babies. And then I've got another guy here who's put a blood pressure band on me, which is automatic. So it's like squeezing and letting go and squeezing and letting go and squeezing and letting go. And then I've got another guy on this side. He's kind of explaining after we do the spinal, then we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. And I'm like, okay, like I'm just trying to take in what everybody's saying and doing. Cause although I, never had a c-section before i kind of did a bit of research on it when i found out that my first baby had turned so i was trying to understand who everybody was i also work in a hospital so i was kind of putting titles to faces and trying to do all of that kind of stuff so i was bent over but i noticed as i was bent over that the midwife in front of me 
couldn't find one of the baby's heartbeats so she kept moving it around and then she had called somebody else who came in the room and she was kind of whispering to that person like I'm having a bit of trouble my senses were so heightened I could hear everything so she was like I'm having a bit of trouble finding one of the baby's heartbeats and so I'm kind of hunched over I'm I can hear the anesthetist behind me talking about my spine so she tries to put it in one place and she's like oh i don't really think i think she said something like that's a bit spongy or something like that so she's having a conversation behind me and then the midwife in front of me is talking to somebody and saying she can't find the heartbeats and i can kind of see the heartbeat screen that there's one heartbeat that's consistent and then there's like a a blank on the other side and when the blank changes to a number it's usually like the same number so i said to her like oh okay you're finding the same baby the same baby she looks up at me and she's like oh yeah like uh, I, I can find the babies but one of them i think i'm just picking up the same heartbeat so she's kind of fiddling around with it and Behind me, they're like, oh, you're gonna feel a sharp spray or a cold spray. And so they spray me and I'm like, <laughs> like this. And they're like, no, 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 you can't move your back. Like you have to stay in the same position. I'm like, okay. okay. So I'm like talking to myself, encouraging myself, keep still, keep still. And meanwhile, I can still see that they're not really finding the heart rate of, this, of a baby. So I say to her like, oh, do you want me to lie down? And she's like, no, I don't really want you to lie down. The person that she called and told that she couldn't find the heartbeat had left the room. So she told somebody else to call the person back. So she calls the person back and the person's like, okay, we'll get a scan, somebody to scan. But these are conversations that they're like having with each other. They're not having it with me. So somebody comes in with a trolley and a, an ultrasound machine and is like, oh, we need you to lie down. And I was like, okay, like, you know, I thought so, but okay. So I, they take whatever they've got, plastic sheet they've got on my back off. And they're like, okay, you just got to lie down. So I lie down and they put the scan on there and they check in the position. The person scanning is kind of like, oh, yeah, we've got one breech baby in, but like, she's kind of umming and ahhing. And from my understanding, my breech baby's bum was hair, but my cephalic, son's head was here so they were pretty the bum and the head was pretty close to each other and i think that is what she was seeing so she was a bit like oh, okay so what baby's baby a what baby's baby b and they're kind of having the conversation she's like oh, okay well i'm not she says something like i'm not i'm not sure that that's breach and so the midwife's like i think she says something like okay so what do you want me to say and the person who scanned was like just put that you check so bear in mind that i don't really want to have this c-section <laughs> so i'm like listening to them she takes the gel off and she she leaves the room so they put me to sit back up and I'm like uh what's what is the person who just scanned me what's their name and they all kind of go silent and kind of like look at me and they're like oh like I'm not really sure what her name is which you know what her name is but okay whatever she's like I'm not really sure what her name is I'm like oh, okay so in my head again now they're putting the plastic on my back I can hear them talking loads of stuff's going on and in my head, I'm just thinking, how do I politely say that I just heard you say the baby is not breech and that you should just put in my notes that you check? What does that mean? I couldn't really think of a, I don't know, like a polite way of saying it. I was just wanting to say what I had in my head quickly. Okay, so in the end, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to say it. I had my eyes closed because they're doing something in my back. And I'm like, why am I having a C-section if baby A is not breech? So they all got quiet. <laughs> The midwife in front of me is like, oh, she just looks at me. And then there's a lady who was sorting out, I guess, the knives and stuff. And she kind of walks to the side of me. She was out of my vision. She walked to the side of me and she was like, oh, um, we can get that checked again. She said something like, if you give birth vaginally, you're probably going to need a spinal anyway. So let's just do the spinal and then we'll call somebody in and they can check. In my head, I was thinking, I don't need a spinal if I'm not having a cesarean. But we're already here, I'm already bent over, you're already spraying my back, so okay. I just thought to myself, okay, the woman behind me like, is like, sharp scratch. So she puts her needle in. She had asked for a longer needle, I heard that as well. The first time she tried, I don't think the needle was long enough, so she got clearly got a bigger one, which was even more nerve wracking. Then she starts talking to me really fast. She's, she's like, look, I need you to lie down very quickly. Bearing in mind, during this time, I'm still having contractions. So I still got the gas in there. So I got the gas in there. And I think maybe that was what was, what was affecting my ability to get my words out. When I was having the contractions, 
distractions so things were still happening and maybe that might even be why i could hear all the conversations because <laughs> i was a bit high everything sounded really loud my legs start start to go numb so i'm like i'm really freaking out now so i kind of have my hand over my face i guess the same lady it sounded like the same voice comes in and checks and somebody says to her like we need to hurry up so you need to just check and confirm the positions of the baby so the uh the lady was like i can confirm baby a's breach so everybody in the room kind of repeats it to me like okay baby a's breach she's checked again baby a's breach so at that point i had been holding out hope for all of that time and at that point i was kind of just i just started crying because i was just thinking oh okay all right fine i did my best right one of the ladies comes up to me why are you crying have we done something to upset you and I was like, no, like, you haven't. Um, I think I'm scared. And then the anaesthetist was, like, standing by my face. And she was, like, rubbing my face. And she's like, oh, why are you crying? Are you scared? Don't be scared. Everything's going to be okay. So I started to calm down a bit. Like, the anaesthetist was stroking my face on this side. And my husband was stroking my face on this side. And then maybe within, like, two minutes, I like, my body was shaking like this. <laughs> and they were like, oh, here's baby one. And they kind of, like pulled him up over the sheet and showed him to me and I don't know I was just I was in such shock I was like hi <laughs> I was like like hi cute of course he was so cute and everything but they they held him up they didn't give him to me and I think because I was still set on like figuring out what was going on I didn't really talk to them about skin to skin or anything like that so, so they showed him to me they took him away I guess they weighed him and put a hat on him and stuff. They, they said, oh, dad, you can come in. So my husband went into the room and he came back out and he was like, oh, he's so beautiful. And I was like, oh, dad, when am I going to get to see him? Is he okay? I can't, I don't think I heard him cry. So I was like, oh, is he okay? Um, I can't hear him crying. And my husband was like, no, no, he's fine. And they're like, oh, and here's baby B. <laughs> and they held him up. And I was like, oh, like, I think at that point I kind of I started to realise a bit more what was happening. They did the same, they took him into the room and then at some point they brought both of them out and they put them like by my face. <laughs> they put them by my face and I was like, oh my gosh, like, oh my God. As much as I didn't want a cesarean, the whole thing was amazing to me. I didn't feel anything and overall they were really nice to me. <laughs> And the experience wasn't bad at all. It seems to be such a skilled operation because they had both of them out. There was two minutes between the two of them. And thank God they both came out absolutely fine. They didn't need any extra support or anything like that. So they were able to come with me back to, I had to go to recovery first and then onto like a labor suite afterwards. But they were able to come with us straight away. So. I was so grateful that they didn't need any extra support. I kind of just laid there. So they showed us the babies and then they took they took them back away. They took a few pictures of us. If I can include any pictures, I will. I'm not really 100% sure about whether I will be showing them yet or at all, to be honest. I don't trust the internet. I've got trust issues with the internet. So we'll see. But maybe about 15 minutes later, the surgeon, who was a lady, she pulled back the thing. She was like, oh, we're finished now. So congratulations and you did a really good job and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, like, it's like magic. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Of course, I still couldn't feel my legs, which feels really weird to me. And even now I'm saying that it was like really straightforward and not a bad experience. If I had to pick between which deliver labor and delivery I preferred, I still preferred my um, natural vaginal delivery. Um, just because the feeling is really weird. And when my legs were going numb, the anesthetic, the anaesthetist did say, oh, you know, like touch your stomach. What does it feel like? And it felt a bit like jelly. It all just felt weird. So when they were moving me over, my I couldn't feel my leg. And I actually had to divert my mind. When I got to where I was going to be staying until I got let home, I was thinking about moving my toes and I realised I couldn't. And I started to, like, I felt like a bit freaked out by it. So I literally had to, like, divert my mind so that I wouldn't think about the fact that I couldn't move my toes. So they put me first into a recovery room where there was a midwife who was just monitoring me. So we had a nice little conversation. I was there for about half an hour and then they moved us on to, to, to I, don't, I don't know why I can't remember the name of the suite where they put people off there, they have babies, but they put us there and I thought it was gonna be a room. I don't know why, 
I thought it was going to be a room, but it was a room, but there were other people in the room and it was just split up by curtains. And I had a bed, but my husband only had a chair. And it was quite noisy because, you know, there were other newborns and other couples that were just split up by curtains. I mean, that wasn't ideal. And then at that point, I started to feel ill. I just started to feel really lightheaded and like I wanted to throw up. So I told the midwife and the midwife was like, oh, we can give you an injection to stop the nausea. And I was like, another injection? Like, no, it's okay. <laughs> so I said no, and she went away. And about half an hour later, I was like, okay, just come, bring the injection, please, because I'm going to vomit everywhere. So she gave me the injection, and it it helped, but I vomited anyway. I felt really just drowsy. I was slurring my words. At one point, my husband said he was a bit worried. He didn't tell me that, but I was able to eat, but of course, I threw all of that up. I didn't feel any pain. The only thing I was feeling is sick, nauseous but no pain. Long story short is that they let us go home the next day, which I was grateful for because that ward was loud as hell. And we took the boys with us. I'm so glad they're here and they're okay and I'm okay and everything went fine and I made it. It was all very emotional for me and my husband, but we're so grateful that they're here. So we're just adjusting to them being here. I am gonna do um, some postpartum updates for you guys. I'm not sure really how often. So we'll just see how things go. If you've got any questions about twin delivery or twin C-section delivery or anything like that, then let me know down in the comments below. Yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.